Chris, your thoughts, the overall tone of the inauguration. Well, it was a very powerful ceremony and powerful speech, but I think one of the, there were a couple of key uh, takeaways from it. One was in terms of how she plans to govern as mayor in a very inclusive way. She talked a lot about getting out in the community, not just being on the fourth floor of City Hall all the time, but getting out in town hall meetings, bringing City Hall to citizens where they are, but also bringing citizens into City Hall, having a situation where all are welcome at City Hall. And this is consistent with what she talked about in the campaign, having new voices on the many City of Jacksonville Board of Commissions, Wards and Commissions. That's going to be really important as mayor. In, you know, Rick talked uh, earlier today about the importance of the strong mayor system in our consolidated uh, City of Jacksonville government. One of the key tools of the strong mayor system is the bully pulpit, uh, the ability to get out in the community, uh, to make her case for her priorities. And that sort of inclusive government she's talking about is only going to help her use those tools as the strong mayor to get out and tell people what her vision is, what she wants to accomplish as mayor, and how they can help them do that. So I think both stylistically and in terms of the way she wants to govern, that was a really important part of today's speech her inclusivity as mayor and her ability to not just be in City Hall, but be throughout in the community and try and build support for what she wants to accomplish. Any thoughts on that, Rick? Well, I certainly agree with Chris. Uh, I thought for her inauguration earlier today, she did a very, very good job. It was well presented. It was personal. It was thematic. She outlined some priorities, very family oriented. And her certainly her communication skills were on display. As you look ahead, she gives a budget address two weeks from Monday, and there are big challenges ahead. And I think the reality of those challenges are going to hit the Deegan administration. Right now, she's in a honeymoon period, rightfully so. There's broad support, rightfully so. And there's some optimism, and that's a great thing. But the laundry list that she discussed and the budget are not in alignment. It is going to be very, very challenging to fund all the things that were talked about. And hard choices are going to have to be made. She talked about resiliency being the, you know, the, the issue of our time, fully funding the Emerald Trail, which I certainly believe is significant and critically important to the future of our downtown and parks. But those are some big numbers. Critical infrastructure for underserved neighborhoods, public safety, and of course, the Jacksonville Jaguars riverfront development and the sports complex. These are things in which you can certainly rally the community behind. But the reality of the budget and the reality of limitations of this budget are going to be very real in the weeks and months ahead. And you had mentioned it stood out to you that the Jacksonville Jaguars stadium was not mentioned once in this. It's such a hot button issue. So. Well, you know, there, it could have been for strategic reasons um, because you're not going to negotiate, as she said in the debate, she's not going to negotiate this on television. So maybe she intentionally left that one off. But she did talk about her priorities. And as I'm very fond of saying, if you want to know what state, local or federal government's priorities are, go look at the budget. In our budget of $1.6 billion, over 50% goes to public safety, police and fire. That is the number one priority. But we also have critical infrastructure needs in which there's debt service for that. She highlighted infrastructure, uh, as, as we talked about earlier. So for now, there's a sense of optimism. It's upbeat. It's positive. As Chris has mentioned, critically important outreach to all of Jacksonville right now. And that support will be important for her policy initiatives and funding. But the limitations of the budget are real. And of course, if the economy were to change, a looming recession out there, if that were to happen, I think this budget actually may be one of the easier budgets of the next four she'll be giving in her first term because she does have a hundred million new dollars coming in July 1. She also has some capital and growth going on. Uh, but those budgets ahead will be challenging, particularly with the priorities that she outlined, because those priorities carry a big price tag. Well, and Ashley, as we know from Ecclesiastes, for everything there is a season. Um, the inaugural address is really about themes and sort of setting big picture priorities. I don't know that the Jaguars kind of fall into one of those thematic categories. She talked about infrastructure and maybe in that sense. I expect to hear a lot more about that in the weeks and months to come. She's already said that she's going to have a series of town hall meetings directly on the issue of the stadium, that her team's going to start negotiating with the Jaguars this summer. So that season, I think, is coming later. The season of the inaugural is really about that big picture sense of how did, what is her vision for the city of Jacksonville? How does she plan to govern as mayor? And in a very broad thematic way, what are some of the areas that she's going to look at? As we move forward, her July 17th budget address, well, she will lay out uh, those priorities that Rick talked about in her budget and how she proposes to allocate $1.6 billion in operational funds and probably several hundred million dollars more in capital funds uh, for the next fiscal year. As we get deeper into her time as mayor, I 
think we'll get into more of those specifics on issues like the Jaguar negotiations over the stadium. Real quick, um, given um, she is the first ma female mayor of Jacksonville, when you look at how important the role of mayor is, especially in a city of our size, what message overall does that send? Well, I think, first of all, it's long overdue in the city of Jacksonville to have a female mayor. But I think it's also the way she talked about it today, very consistent with the way she ran her campaign, talking about the importance of a community where there is inclusivity, where the, everybody has opportunity. So the fact that she has now broken this historic barrier, has become the first female mayor, I think is an opportunity for her to also implement that vision of inclusivity and opportunity for the entire community going forward and of course she will have special credibility in doing that as she is someone who has broken barriers herself and being the first sometimes you're often viewed under a, a, a more specific and critical lens do you think her being the first female mayor will actually put more pressure on her to actually be able to succeed in what she said says as she set to do uh, not necessarily so. In fact, I, I think in some ways it may help her with broader support. And by the way, you've seen her and her selections have reflected that. Uh, the, chief, uh, the chief administrative officer is female. The chief of staff is female. The chief financial officer is female. She's been uh, very diverse in her selections, bipartisan in her selections. I think that broader support is going to be essential because certainly as Chris saw in the Brown administration and I saw when I was in city government, it is a challenge. The public arena is a difficult one. The budget realities are challenging. Diverse constituencies are challenging. Competing demands are challenging. And having that broad support and that broad coalition is going to be important in dealing with those issues ahead because there will be some very challenging issues ahead.